Although the albatross has a number of celebrity friends, including the ultimate bird nerd Sir David Attenborough and Prince Charlie himself, it has yet to secure its rightful title of Bird of the Year. Last year, it got pipped at the post by our nocturnal green parrot, the kākāpō, despite a stunning campaign that drew people's attention to New Zealand's status as the albatross capital of the world. This year, it plans on winning the hearts and minds of New Zealanders by concentrating on its sensitive romantic side, its worldliness, its dancing skills and its devastating good looks. Take a look at this face. Grace Jones obviously did the makeup, but you can't deny this is a beautiful, beautiful bird. And what a dancer. The albatross starts to learn its elaborate courtship dance at a young age and may spend up to five years perfecting its dance before it woos a partner and enters into a long, long long-term relationship. A fan of gender equality and lifelong monogamy, the albatross can spend up to 50 years with one partner. This couple here has just celebrated its golden wedding anniversary. As well as being a romantic, it's a great traveller, one of the best. It's got an internal GPS system that means it can travel to the far end of the world with only a stiff wind to guide it. These seafaring birds are no doubt more evolutionary advanced than us because they can do something we've yet to master. They can drink seawater. Indeed, while we're busy towing icebergs and scrapping over river rights, our albatross will be drinking from an ever-plentiful source, the sea. The albatross is no stranger to envious admiration, mind you. It only needs to cast its mind back to the early 1900s when the wingless world tried desperately to ape its aerodynamic design and its lazy flying style. You see, the albatross has mastered flight, perfected it in fact. They just lock their lengthy wings in position, catch an updrift and let the wind's currents do the work. By doing so, they can reach speeds of up to 80 k's an hour using the same amount of energy required to paddle on the water's surface. They're such keen flyers they may spend up to five years at sea, and when they return, many find their legs simply won't support their weight. Until the 1930s, Albatross was a creature whose private life was largely shrouded in mystery. That is, until a few brave Albatross tried to colonise a piece of the mainland near Dunedin in the 1930s, only to find they drew big, big crowds. Their jelly-like projectile missiles proved a feeble defence in the face of hordes of curious bystanders after souvenir eggs. The colony only got off the ground because of one ornithologist, Mr Lance Richdale, who decided to camp by a nest until its egg hatched. That was 1938. Over the centuries, salty dogs, sailors and lost fishermen have waxed lyrical about the albatross, praising it as a kindly chaperone and a helmsman. Others have cursed its presence, believing it to be a feathery incarnation of drowned sailors' past. These days, the albatross need not worry about being fired at by unhinged mariners. It's got something much bigger to fret about, the commercial fishing industry. In New Zealand waters alone, around 10,000 albatross die in fishing nets and long lines every year. So let's give our albatross a fighting chance by encouraging good fishing practices such as night fishing. Let's put our hands together for the albatross, a sea-drinking wonder, a hopeless romantic and a feathery aviator like no other. 2009 Bird of the Year, the albatross.